My name is Mitch, and I work with Oxford Study Courses. I'm going to show you a few examples of how you, as a teacher, can use OSC Study as a resource for your class. Now, the OSC Study app is designed by IB experts so that students can learn in the way that's best for them. Now, there's three ways to approach the subject. There's flashcards, revision guides, and videos. Are you wondering how to access OSC Study? If you have a Manage Bank account, go ahead and log in with that one. In this case, here I'm in the Faria School. So once you're in there, you should select OSC Home. And from there, you'll see all sorts of useful things, including OSC Study. Now, you can have a free trial or else you can purchase from here. Now, in this case, my school got us an account. So, yay! So I'll click on the Go to App button. Now, as you can see here, we have a whole bunch of different subjects available, and we're adding lots more. Uh, now, OSC Study, it works for a PC, Mac, any other mobile device, a phone or tablet. It's designed to be fully responsive, so you can use it on the go or on a bigger screen at home. So let's say that I'm teaching a math applications or AI class with uh, a mixed group of SL and HL students together. So today we have a class planned on topic four, so it's T-tests. So I'm just going to show you one example of how it is that you could use OSC Study in your class. Of course, there's so many, many more, but we'll just show an example here. So first of all, from the app, your students and you can uh, first select the subject we want. So we want Math AI. Now, once you're in the app, you can see along the bottom right here, we've got this topics. That just toggles the left navigation here. Students can write notes on anything that they want and organize their information into folders. So can you teachers, of course. Um, along the top right, can you see it says Math AI? If you press that, you go back to that uh, tile where you can select different subjects. So let's just say I want to put my uh, topics back here. So along the top right here, you'll see we've got flashcards, revision guides, and videos. And those are the three ways that you can approach the information here. So if we look at these Math AI, well, if, remember, we're doing uh, topic four. So we can scroll down. You see right here it says topics, and it says SL. We've got them tagged under SL or HL. But let's just say we're doing the SL topic four. So we'll go to click on study topic. So what I would do then, at least one way to approach this, is out you know, those groups of students, I would assign them to do the following. I'd say, well, OK, everybody, I want you to read uh, Revision Guide page 35. So that means they can scroll down and see the page number here and say, ah, there's page number 35. I'd tell them, or they could watch video um, number 63. So let's just see what those look like. So Revision Guide 35, if you click on Hypothesis Testing, you can see here it explains the generalities of how to do hypothesis testing. There's some examples. We go through chi-squared and goodness of fit. There's examples, of course, with answers just to show students how to do them. So the, the main place, if we're doing t-tests, that's near the bottom, right? We've got the t-tests here. So I'll tell students, OK, your groups, you are assigned to either read you know, this page 35 right here near the bottom for t-tests. Or you could click on videos and you could watch a video about it. Some students learn best by that. So for example, let's say I click on this uh, video number 63 on t-tests. And uh, let's just say I go like this right here. I'll just turn off the sound there so you can hear me. So there's uh, me sitting in my basement explaining how to do this. So there I'm talking about, you know, why you should reject H0. And I'm just showing some practical examples how to go about doing it. So the students could use whichever way of learning that works best for them. So first I'd have the students work individually. Uh, then I would have them write notes on what they learned. Now let's assume that we've trained them on how to take effective notes. And then what we would do is we would meet up as a group and we'd share and consolidate our knowledge. And after that, they would have to explain it to the class. This is sort of a modification of this think, pair, share kind of model. So once we've done all that, you know, the students have worked on their own, in their groups, and then have explained it to the class, then maybe we can test ourselves and go ahead and try some of these flashcards for it. So these ones right here, um, let's just say I'm going to have them do, uh, we'll start with 238 maybe. I'll just close the topics just so you can concentrate on this. So for example, this might be the question where, you know, as a class, we try to see if we can solve this. So I can use the arrows to go left and right, and I can press the space bar, for example, to show the 
the answer, or I can just, of course, click on these. So we can say, you know, hey, how do we do a hypothesis test? Just to generalize it a little bit, you know, then we can go ahead and, and talk about, for example, a two-sample t-test and chi-squared and goodness of fit test. We could then talk about, you know, a few examples of what kind of parameters are in the context, so what kind of things are we setting up in order to do this test. Maybe we can look at a practical one where we actually go through and do the test. So it would be really ha handy to see for students how we actually solve these. There's so many different ways of approaching the content. So let's say that I'm a physics teacher and I have a class tomorrow on simpler harmonic motion. Now it's a flipped classroom, so I want my students to learn the theory at home so we can concentrate on doing physics in class tomorrow. So here's how I could use OSC study. Well first, from the study app, I would make sure to click on physics. Then from there, I would make sure I select the proper topic. So in this case here, we're in topic four. So I would select that topic. Now I've got my flashcards, revision guides, and videos. So before tomorrow's class, I would assign my students for homework. So for example, for tonight, I would say, okay, tonight's homework, what I want you to do is go into the study app, into topic four, and I'll tell them, I want you to take a look at either flashcards, revision guides, or videos, and make sure you take your own notes on it. So we're going to assume that I've trained them on how to take effective notes already. So, for example, the flashcards, I would tell them, okay, flashcards, you can do uh, look at uh, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, just to learn, you know, what you might need about this. So you can see how these are here work. Maybe we do this one right here. Uh, maybe, you know, I want them to concentrate on, for example, this graph here for simple harmonic motion. So that's one way that students could learn it. Or they could go through the revision guides and maybe look at, you know, these different pages here on what simple harmonic motion looks like, these conditions. So these are here essentially lead to the graph. We've got some things on the pendulum. Or they could use the video right here. I would tell them, look at video uh, number 19, for example, and have them go through that. So you can see, for example, uh, how this graph actually looks, how it's drawn. So there's lots of different ways for students to approach this, but the idea is that they end up with the same information, just in different modalities. So tomorrow, when we start the class, for example, um, what I would do then is have the students, hey, right when they come to class, I'll give them a quiz to check for understanding. Maybe we mark with our peers, so that way the students mark it themselves. This is so that we don't have to have spent all the time learning theory in class, because once you've done this, and hopefully we've motivated them to you know, learn the information because there's a quiz, but also now we can spend the time doing physics, actually doing experiments. We can show simple harmonic motion. We can show pendulums you know, oscillating back and forth, this kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's dynamic. This is what we want to spend the time on. We could do you know, timing, finding the acceleration due to gravity from this. I've had my own students you know, be the pendulums, which you know, turned out to be good exercise in error analysis. But there's so many different ways to use these resources in your class. So what's next for the OSC study app? In the next couple of months, we're going to be adding more subjects. Also, let's say we go into one subject. I just want to show you, we're going to be adding past exam questions. So imagine if there was a fourth uh, option here for past exams. So that way, you know, if a student, uh, let's say they're looking at topic three, let's say. Well, we can actually have exam questions that are going to go over um, let's say 3D geometry in this case right here. So we want to have past exam questions based on the subtopic. We also want to have exam questions based on an entire topic, as well as down here we're going to have uh, past exam questions, like entire exams, so, so students and you can see how they're going to look. And those are going to include uh, not just the questions, but also detailed written solutions, as well as video solutions. Now, as far as teacher functionality, well, students already, they can write notes on things. So, for example, you know, a student can say maybe, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't understand this, can you help? So, we're going to be adding functionality where they can send these messages to their teachers. So, that way, you know, the teacher can see when students really need help. Uh, you're going to be able to send assignments to students as well, so you can go backwards, so to speak, and, and send you know, assignments to them to tell them what that they need to do, so for flashcards, revision guides, and videos. And we're also working on having teachers give students quizzes and assessments directly in the app itself. To use this service, please ask your administrator to instantly enable on Services Manager within the settings. You will see all of our services available on this page.
To add the service, click the Add Service button.